Prospector News is media for educational purposes only and should not be construed as advice. We are not a certified financial analyst, licensed broker, or fund dealer. Exempt market dealer or hold a license to provide financial advice. We provide no legal opinion regarding accounting, tax, or law issues. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as investment advice or the solicitation to buy or sell stocks or commodities. All opinions expressed are those of the participants and should not be relied upon when making investment decisions. Those decisions should be made with the advice of a personal financial advisor. If you have enjoyed our podcast, please hit the like and share buttons and be sure to hit subscribe. I'm Michael Fox, and this is the Procaster News Podcast. As we roll these podcasts out, there's a couple of topics that I'm very interested in uh, having as discussions. One is I want to get to know the CEOs of these companies. I'm a big believer when you're an investor, you should bet on the jockey as much as the horse. And there are jockeys that that are better than others, and uh, we want to feature those in order to Um, bring attention to their successes and what makes them tick. Uh, The other topic that I also wanting to roll out um, is that this is really a male dominated industry, unfairly so. And I wanna feature some of the uh, great women that work in our industry and their successes. And so that they can provide leadership and mentorship to uh, other women in the industry and to uh, and to uh, young women that maybe are considering mining and and some of the occupations within our industry as a career. So uh, today's guest actually ticks both those boxes. I have joining me today, I have Claudia Turnquist. She is the CEO of Kodiak Copper and she has a very impressive uh, resume. Uh, She's recently joined the board of directors and the executive team of American Lithium. Uh, Prior to being the CEO of Kodiak Copper, she served as the Executive Vice President of Business Development for Sandstorm Gold, which is a gold streaming and royalty company. Uh, She worked nine years at Rio Tinto as a General Manager in Strategy, Business Evaluation, Mergers, Acquisitions and Business Development in her various senior management roles in that company. Uh, She's also a director at Silver One Resources and a former director at Kennedy Diamonds. So uh, we're talking to a very accomplished uh, CEO and uh, welcome to the show, Claudia. Well, great to be here. Thank you, Michael, for the kind introduction. Oh, not a problem. It's uh, it's really nice when the resume can take up most of the podcast, but it keeps me from having to talk so much. (laughs) So tell me, when you were a young Claudia, how did you get started in the mining business? Well, I got into mining a little bit by chance, like one of the the turns life takes. I started out as a mechanical engineer. I always liked math, physics, science as a kid in school. And so mechanical engineering is what I chose for my master's. And that was back in Germany where I grew up. I then worked for a number of years in the automotive industry, did an MBA. And after that MBA through a headhunter, um, came to join Rio Tinto at the time that's now more than 20 years ago and that really started my career in mining i stayed for almost 10 years with rio tinto went through a number of of different um and increasingly more senior roles there which was a fantastic experience and i learned really a lot and then made the change into the junior sector and moved to vancouver 12 years ago now and um have been in the junior end of the industry ever since I'm very much enjoying it. Wonderful and as I say you're uh, you're currently the CEO of Kodiak Copper. Uh, tell us a little bit about that company just a quick introduction for those who don't know it. Well Kodiak is a copper exploration company focused on copper porphyries in North America and we made a discovery at our MPD project just about two years ago which was a real game changer 
for the company and are now drilling, have big build programs, 25,000 meters this year planned, 21,000 last year. So um, expanding on our discovery. And Kodiak has been founded by Chris Taylor, whom many of your listeners will know from our sister company, Great Bear Resources, which Chris also founded and made into a great discovery success, um, sold the company for 1.8 billion earlier this year to Kinross. So Chris is the founder and the geologist in the team. And I met Chris right after he founded Kodiak, that was back in 2015. And um, I actually invested in the first financing when Chris just put the company together and then worked with Chris as a consultant initially when the company was still really small and was really only Chris running it. And then later went on the board a year after and then again a year after joined Chris in the executive management and as a president and now CEO. So that's how I sort of got to where I am. And Chris now is the chairman of the company. He is a geologist. My background sort of is more the engineering and the, the business side. So we're very complimentary and working together very well. It's good to have a nice complimentary team that you can uh, can rely on and bounce stuff back and forth off of each other. And you don't have that kind of group think that can uh, sometimes happen. So mm-hmm. you bounced, uh, well, not bounced around you. As I say, you've had a pretty impressive uh, um, history in the mining industry. Uh, what's what's some of the highlights? What are some of the key things that have happened during your career that really stand out for you? Well, that's a difficult question. Um, for me, certainly starting in the mining industry in a big company like Rio Tinto was a big benefit because it really enables you to see a lot of different things. I worked across a number of different commodities and it was just an incredible learning opportunity. And um, so I really appreciate the time I had at at Rio Tinto and the career there. And the other end of the business, the junior side is very different. It's much more entrepreneurial, much faster moving, much higher risk, and um, is also very enjoyable. I think a combination of the the both is probably um, a really good skill set. And I'm certainly very happy how my career panned out that way. That's good. Now, I'm sure you faced some challenges along the way. Uh, what were they and what did you learn and how did that make you a, a better CEO and manager? Uh, if you're referring to sort of challenges as a woman in a very male-dominated industry, I mean, I've, I started in automotive and then went into mining. So I've always been in very male-dominated industries. And it's very hard to say actually whether um, there were challenges because often you just simply don't know whether opportunities don't come to you as a female candidate or female manager because people just don't think of you or whether yeah whether it's a positive or negative to be um, um, sort of an outlier or a female in a male dominated industry. I've certainly experienced both that um, I had moments where I thought that I remember, for example, a job interview where I then came out of the interview and just really felt, okay, well, these three guys who I was sitting opposite, three middle-aged guys, just couldn't see a woman doing that role. But I had the exact opposite as well, that I had bosses who really valued diversity and really actively tried to find good female candidates and promote them. So I think it's, it's both. And I can certainly say from my own experience that the tide is really turning. I've had so many opportunities come to me this year in particular and last year, people who offer me board positions and so on. And I really feel that um, in mining, people start to realize that they're missing out if they don't consider half of the the talent in their decisions. And if they are just really only focusing on the the typical male candidates and really there's a a change going on at this time. Uh, Good, that's uh, that's good to hear. Cause yeah, there's, as I say, um, there's a lot of really talented women that are involved in this business and uh, 
I would hate to see them overlooked just because of stereotypes and uh, historical biases that, you know, have no place in business. Yep. Uh, what kind of <laughs> advice would you give other women in the business about getting started in, in it, uh, trying to move up the, the corporate ladder, that type of thing? I think it's just a, a question of going for it. Like when I started my career early on, um, I wasn't deterred by an industry or a university um, major that was completely male dominated. If anything, I saw it as an opportunity to be a trailblazer and I just went for it. And in the end of the day, at the end of the day, if you do good work and um, are, um, are a good colleague and a good manager and a good leader, then whatever your gender, whatever your background, you'll be successful. That's really what counts the most. And so, yeah, it's just go for it and and um, do the good work and then um, you'll be successful. So your philosophy is good work breeds success then? Exactly. So as your career progressed, uh, what challenges did you, uh, did you face to help you uh, form yourself as the CEO you are today? Well, one challenge in the mining industry that I found certainly difficult initially is the cyclicality of the business. I remember when I first set out to try and create and find my own opportunity and find a company or found a company to lead. That was in 2012, 2013. That was in the middle of the, the downturn. And even though well, rationally, I thought that's a good time to set out and, and start creating opportunity. It was very hard because in the downturn in mining, just nothing happens. Um, no business gets done. Nobody wants to finance anything. And um, it took um, two years or so before I really found the right opportunity which was Kodiak then um, to get going. And that was certainly a tough time. And what it taught me is just to, yeah, to be resilient in a downturn. And really, yeah, I learned the hard way that in the downturn, that's where you really um, make the best opportunities. And you just have to be resilient, put your head down and keep up the good work, keep looking for the opportunities. And for, for Kodiak, it's I feel at the moment a little bit the same with the stock markets being really terrible. But um, we just have to not get frustrated by the, by the um, stock market, keep up the good work. We're luckily financed so we can drill keep up the good work, and um, then we'll come out with an advantage as and when the, the market turns up again. Yeah, one of my uh, key people in my life was my father, and he always said that uh, bad times built character, and uh, uh, those of us that went through that downturn, we, uh, we definitely all have a lot of character behind us now. That's well said. Um, so as you go forward, what challenges are you looking forward to going into the future for yourself and for your company? Well, for Kodiak, certainly, I look um, to build the company into a successful exploration company and really generate value for, for our shareholders. We're only at the start. We have a big porphyry system that we made one successful discovery, and there's a whole lot more discovery potential to be unlocked. So um, moving the company forward with a very sort of um, systematic, very methodical approach to exploration or to drilling, very much also driven by, by Chris Taylor and very similar approach to how he made Great Bear a big success. That's really my aim. And being um, a good manager, building a good organization um, and ultimately generate lots of value for our shareholders. Wonderful. I look forward to uh, the growth in Kodiak and look forward to uh, seeing what's next for Claudia. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you, Michael.